Ladies, get ready this week on the hot seat. We have Albie Shaw. You might want to put your seatbelts on for this. It's going to be a nice ride. Legendary entertainer and industry guru, Albie Shaw, this week on the Music Head Show. With me, Martha Simasoni and Sonia Daniels. You're in the place to be with Albie. Songwriter, recording artist, as well as a radio host, possibly many more. Your history within the music entertainment spans over two decades. So, talk us through how it all began with you. Well, I guess as a young man growing up in a pretty small town, I would say four square miles. I'm not sure of the conversion in kilometers. So, you know, it was just that had a very healthy population of young, hustling, and grinding people. 
people uh, looking to make a difference in society, different industries, you know, whether it be the medical industry, whether it be sports, entertainment. It's a place called, which we term Money Earned in Mount Vernon, which is four square miles right outside of the Bronx, New York. And of course, you know, we have people such as Dick Clark, Denzel Washington, uh, E.B. White, the off name Charlotte's Web, J.D. Smooth, you know, a prominent actor, Heavy D and the Boys, Pete Rock, Seal Smooth, Sean Diddy Combs. Uh, we have just a number of prominent people just from around the globe, Michael Jackson's attorneys, Art Carney from the Honeymooners, uh, Felicia Rashad, Ahmad Rashad, Stephanie Mills. The list just goes on. It's a place with a great deal of pride. I mean, I can travel anywhere around the globe and meet someone that's familiar with Mount Vernon. It carries a great flag, and I think everyone is very proud of you know, the representation. So, you know, coming up as a youngster, uh, I, went to, I attended a church in New Rochelle, which is the next town over, kind of a competition city, you know, from playing in high school sports. But I attended a church there called the Bible Way Church, and we had Bishop Odell Wiley, who was the pastor there. He really influenced me in terms of being interested in, I didn't necessarily want to start out as a singer. I was very much interested in the technical aspect of the recording, and so what we did was we built a booth in the church, we recorded, we got some recording equipment, I would record the choir, record the sermon, do the voiceovers, and then take it to the local AM station for the broadcast. And that's really kind of how it started, where I really just became truly acclimated with the aspect of music and sound and things of that nature in the studio. And my cousin Kyle West and myself just truly had this love for music. You know, Kyle's father was a professor of music and music theory. My dad, my grandfather played piano as well. And of course, the family would keep certain music on the record player. You know, everything from, you know, Michael Jackson to Stevie Wonder, Earth, Wind & Fire. So we had these great influences in terms of the significance of who musicians were, you know, the Quincy Jones mm -hmm. of the world, where we learned the real meat and the core of what music was all about. As a family get together, you know, the cousins would get together and borrow our aunt's station wagon. And my oldest cousin, Milo, Nick West, you know, he had the license, so we'd make this music on the weekends in the house, took some of the equipment, put it on a pool table, and made these cassette tapes. But we would make the music just so that we would have music on the weekend to pop in the cassette tapes in the car to ride all the way down to New York City. So that was kind of the ironic part of it because we were thinking, oh, we're going to make records and we're going to be an international recording artist or anything of that nature. We were just sort of having fun and really enjoying it. And I think that's why the true essence of what the music represents still reigns true today because we entered into the situation for the right reason. You know, it was just strictly because of the love of music. We couldn't live without it. That was just something that every day after school we had to run to the basement to get on the keyboard and start creating. And, you know, I'm in the lunchroom writing on the back of my, you know, lyrics and things of that nature. You know, it just it kind of started out that way. And now, what are some of the challenges you face in the music industry today compared to how they used to be before? You know what, I'm not really sure I can give you an accurate answer only because I don't consider myself part of an industry. I've put in enough work over the years that I consider the vehicle of music a blessing and has allowed me to, to travel the world, to meet significant figures, different industries, but it's always been a spiritual food for me, the music. So I don't look at it necessarily as a pigeon hole. It's created and it's made me a citizen of the world. And it's really amazing how you were able to introduce artists like Jodeci, Tevin Campbell, Faith Evan, Case and Usher to the music industry. So what was it about those particular artists that would set them apart from other artists? I'm just trying to get some advice for our music heads artists who are trying to break into the music industry. Starting with being a writer and producer, you know, I guess I can always simplify it by saying I've just always been a student of Quincy Jones and the Quincy Jones effect, which I've coined that phrase because basically he instilled musically this ideology that try everything, don't just do the music, but make sure you write, you produce, you conduct, you know, whether it's television, you do radio, you do film, scoring, you know, whatever the case is, really spread your wings and reach out so that, you know, but hone in on your core skill, which, you know, Quincy would say is, would be the orchestration and writing. And I truly think that there's a certain magic. I watch some of the shows here in America, there are many of the shows with the judges and with the singers, and they try to find the best singer and so on and so forth. And the majority of them are what we would call popularity contests, because, you know, when they have the text campaign, the things of that nature.
range of people all over the, you know, so if the young girls are voting for the cute boy or the guys are voting for the cute girl that's on the show, that's why it's a different scrutiny within the industry because, you know, with A&R people and like the Jimmy Iveens of the world who are masters at it, you know, Dr. Dre, you know, there's certain people that know it's never really just been about saints, really it's an entire package. And also... I guess the common denominator with all of them. You know, I met Usher when he was 11 or 12 years old and his mom dropped him off to the studio. Sean Combs called me to come work with him on the first project. And, you know, it was a blessing. But this kid was just super amazing, not just as a vocalist, but you could just tell that this young man was hungry. He lived in the studio with us. He didn't stop singing. The funny part that I guess most people don't know is right in the middle of us recording his album, he lost his voice, meaning that his voice actually started to change. And he was going through that process, but he's so talented and he's figured out a way around it to the point where he's become one of the masters of the game. That range true, you know, from him being a young child star to what he's doing right now. He's probably one of the largest recording artists in the world right now. We have the same thing with Faith Evans. Faith Evans, we call, we had a fun nickname for her. We used to call her the doctor because Faith would come in to the studio. You know, we'd have the tracks laid out, we'd have the lyrics, we'd have all this stuff going on. I'd come in and direct her to where we're going and so on and so forth. But her interpolation, the composition was so amazing that it brought a new life to it. Like she was the doctor that just fixed you. And truly, it was one of those magical people that just has a natural ability and a skill that, you know, same thing with Dave Hollister. I remember, you know, first meeting Dave when I was working with Casey and JoJo Fonte and, you know, the Jodeci crew. Dave could duplicate all of their voices. So it was amazing. So he can do JoJo, he can do KC, he can do everyone. So he was another person that came and he was singing my demos. And he was just somebody else who was magical. But Dave was a little different because Dave was truly this down-home spiritual guy with just a truckload of talent. And, you know, what I like about Dave's career right now is Dave always keeps keeps God for best within his craft. And he's been blessed. He's been truly blessed. Like I said, you have different people and it's really a certain something that you can't teach, a certain something that you can't develop. Uh, nowadays in the industry, they have a lack of what we used to call artist development. Uh, when I was at Warner Brothers, signed by Benny Medina, you know, when I was working with Andre Durrell, they had a the specific department that would work with the artists in terms of anything from media training to vocal coaching and uh, things of that nature. So, you know, nowadays, it's kind of sign the artist, sing this song we wrote for you, and get out there on the stage, and a lot of them aren't prepared as they should be. So what we did at Uptown, you know, as a management firm and company, you know, between MCA and Warner Brothers, every artist that we worked with surrounded them with the production. And of course, me, like I said, working with Kyle West, that was probably the greatest opportunities. Um, and then all of a sudden being under the tutelage of the master himself, Teddy Riley. So imagine working with Kyle West, Teddy Riley, and Quincy Jones. So I got every mm-hmm. aspect musically from kind of more of the orchestration and the polish and then Teddy with the street and the grit and Kyle was like the, the reincarnation of Stevie Wonder. So all of those influences, Kyle and I would call our version of the music adult contemporary hip hop mm-hmm. because it was still driven by hip hop because it's what we grew up on, but it was musical and very melodic. And that's kind of what we've made sure to do with everyone we work with over the years. But as I said, it's just the music and the vehicle of music is just truly been a blessing and I'm grateful for it.
you were just saying and moving a bit more closer to home one of your sons little be sure is getting into the music industry himself so what advice have you given him about what the expectations are what the world's going to be like out there for him i am so very proud of his drive and his lack of entitlement there's a lot of the you know, young people who grew up in environment of a celebrity or what have you you know they feel entitled like it's supposed to happen it's supposed to happen for me but my guy is really just probably the hardest working young men there are out there regardless of who the affiliation is or who the association is and they really like especially with little Al I mean he at one point I remember when he was first been interested in doing the singing and he said yo Pops write me the song write me this and I would say no let's sit down and then I would we would have the track on and we would sit down and I would just tell him look just write your feelings down forget about the song structure and arrangement forget about things of that nature just write down if you saw this girl in school and y'all had a conversation and this that the other the third said just write that down whatever you were feeling whatever you're thinking and then he started to do that but then also he started to pay attention to song structure and arrangement so he was able to fit the words into the verses and the chorus and this and then he's become a master of melody now and just hearing his mixtape he has a new project out he's working on now called Best Friends and Orgasms <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the pops is a little bit more of a reserved kind of you know, lingerie he just wants to get to the point but that's okay but that's his expression encourage him to just keep going forward but the, the music just sounds so so good you know and along with you know my other son Quincy he's a, a genius in his own right as well where he also not only does the music and the hip hop and he's doing the singing but he's also a director and actor these are young guys that truly are <laughs> to a whole nother level because of their work ethic not because of who they're associated with that's just an added plus these guys are really really talented that other guy Devin he is just a brilliant artist painter and musician and things of that nature so it's just amazing to watch them do what they do and, and just be as good as they are you know but as a parent you kind of you look back and you go oh yeah my kid is good no 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 it's not my mass opinion and I'm just very very proud to be that they're taking it seriously and doing it for the right reason you know I only wish them Godspeed with all moving forward and I want them to go to the moon with it and really just take it to a whole other level so I'm very proud of them what do you think was your biggest greatest opportunity thus far I grew up with I grew up like I said in one year in Mount Vernon and my best friend growing up was a gentleman by the name of DJ Eddie F who was the DJ for Heavy D and the Boys of course legendary DJ um, you know co-creative of the group and I was singer in the background you know kind of the engineer and I used to carry the equipment to the parties for him and we used to rock together you know with the production stuff and you know and then getting involved with that aspect before getting into the industry for some reason I was entered into a contest called Sony Innovators Sony Corporation of America were looking for new signed and unsigned talent something innovative melodic and the final judges were Herbie Hancock and Quincy Jones Herbie Hancock chose this incredible jazz musician by the name of Terrence Blanchard and Quincy Jones chose me and it was probably the biggest blessing ever to have someone like a master mobile 
mogul like a Quincy Jones. Choose me outside of just feeling that my music was innovative and something new and melodic, but it also gave me an encouragement that I could actually do great things. Because I think every young person just needs to hear that from someone that they think is great. And it's really, it goes a very, very long way. So probably one of the greatest opportunities is being chosen as the first Sony innovator you know, back in the late 80s by Quincy Jones. Now, also remember reading that you're part of Foundation. Cause, so tell us about that. One of the main, or something that's or something near my heart, a, an organization called Heaven Can Wait here in Las Vegas. They take care of our four-legged creatures. It is a very particular organization that doesn't euthanize. They save the animals and they you know, try to find homes. And it's just nice to see people truly, truly care about the animals that way. And you know, we just finished shooting some PSA for them as well. And, you know, doing a telephone and things of that nature. So it's definitely one of my favorites. Uh, and, uh, of course, the ALO magazine and the ALO Cultural Foundation. It's probably the largest uh, Middle Eastern publication. Wafa Kanan and Michael are probably two of the most innovative editors in terms of having a creativity because if you see the magazine, ALO magazine, it's like a pill. But what it does, it, it introduces the cultures of the Middle East and America and around the globe, you know, and shows the synergies and things of that nature as opposed to creating opposition. It just shares the cultures all the way around. It's an amazing way. Magazine. The principal, Wafa, is probably one of the greatest hearts and has one of the largest hearts uh, on planet Earth for what she does. She walks the walk instead of talking about it, you know, from getting hearing aids for the kids in the war and, and things of that nature. I mean, she's just this nonstop bulldozer of kindness, you know, along with Michael and what did they do over at Allo Magazine. The bottom line is, at this point in this stage in my life, the most important is to see my young people do their thing and just go to the moon with their craft. Really just really take it to another level and be able to, to teach and give to some of these newer artists what I was allowed to experience. I had such an eclectic career from the beginning in terms of one of our first jobs was producing material for Rod Stewart, working with Robert Palmer, working with Quincy Jones, of course, of working with Barry White, El DeBarge, Al Green, Diana Ross, you know, the legends. I mean, that was kind of where I, I got my first chops. Um, and then really just not being afraid to just stretch and spread your wings. I'm co-executive producer on the Jamie Foxx HBO special titled I Might Need Security, um, which of course Jamie is another force to be reckoned with. He's, you know, just a winning beast at his craft yeah. and what he does. I mean, just in terms of being a quadruple threat, you know, from, you know, music to comedy, acting, and as an entrepreneur, you know, we're very, very proud of him. You know, we always like, we joke about it, but we like to say we gave Chris Rock his first job as well, because Chris boy is Tony as well. Tony Rock is, you know, what a talented, talented family. Chris Rock used to open up for my dates and my tours, and, you know, he would just knock him dead every time. He's just one of those guys that you could just truly tell that he was just something special. And then when he hit the, the big screen, the New Jack City, and things of that nature, you could just tell he was somebody who's really going to do quite well at his craft. We're proud to see him taking it to the moon as well. These things are all inspirations, knowing that you work with these individuals over the years and seeing them take their crafts seriously and master what they've done in it also as well I mean I think what's the most important aspect of it would be seeing them influence generations and influence an industry mm -hmm. that's to me is the most significant part of a person doing their craft you know you can be a great singer and a great writer and a great producer or a great actor but what do you do with it do you make the people around you better that's what the Michael Jordans of the world do that's you know where Michael gets on the court and if you have marginal players surrounding you those players step their game up just because of watching his work ethic so what do you want to accomplish in the future as uh, cliche as it may sound I think the best thing would be to see within this particular industry is people working together people truly taking the pride in what they do I really want to see my young people just take their craft to another level where they reap the benefits of their spirits being fulfilled their dreams being fulfilled which is most important um, at this stage and, and really you know just at the end of the day you know, I look forward to bigger and better things as well and, and just taking more steps going deeper into film and television and things of that nature and introducing new music you know assisting more artists that are coming along you know trying to uh, accomplish their goals as well I'll be sure if you wanted to be a superhero who would you be and why? I would say the Superman for a number of reasons I would dream of health flying, being able to fly, visit places around the world, be able to change people's lives, you know, mm. I think that's, uh, that's pretty significant. Has there ever been a time where you've had a uh-oh moment that you can remember? Probably 
probably one of the funnier uh-oh moments would be uh, on the Any Heartbreak tour with myself, Bobby Brown, a new edition. I don't recall which city in particular, but I remember being on stage doing a dance routine. Coming out of a turn, I heard rip, and apparently the entire back of my pants <laughs> split in, in half. So it was a uh, sight to see, I guess. <laughs> So I, I had to dance and not do any turn around and kind of slide off the stage and get, <laughs> get back on. But um, that, you know, that, those, those moments are pretty embarrassing. You know, Watch drill malfunction. <laughs> We've had a few of those come through as well. But the show must carry on and it sounds like you did. <laughs> exactly. The show must go on. Always. Perfect. Shout out to anybody. Any and all information regarding the upcoming shows and events and anything regarding you know, I'll be sure you can visit www.albeshore.net and of course my Facebook is facebook.com forward slash official albeshore all one word my Instagram is the same official albeshore and my Twitter is official albeshore it's all one word uh, so please uh, join me there and we can put this journey together do you have anyone you want to shout out to? Chris and Deb Chester doing so many wonderful things in New Zealand. Uh, very specifically, they have a new product called K9 H2O. It's vitamin water for dogs. And it's the greatest new invent. It's going to be something. You guys check it out there in New Zealand. A big shout out to everyone around the globe that has supported R&B music and uh, you know, all the artists in my genre. Because as a true artist, it's been about me. It's about the collective. And it's about the team. And it's about some of my favorite artists. Keith Sweat. A guy. In addition, there's certain artists out there who just are truly inspire. And you know, we all do it together. Especially on the weekends. We do several cities on the weekends. So it can be a package of myself, John. John B, SWV, it could be myself, Lisa, Lisa, Nicole Jam, Rob Bass, myself, BBD, and we just did a show with myself, Silk, Jagged Edge, Tony, 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 and these packages are so nice because what happens is during that process, when you're out there on the road, you know, as a ticket buyer, a person who comes to the concert, you are basically living and receiving that evening the soundtrack to your life. You know, that's what you grew up with. So the back-to-back hits and the back-to-back songs that just really take you back to that place, you know, when music felt really, really good. And you might have went to buy a ticket and you might have forgot about the light bill at the moment because you're like, look, I need to go see my favorite artist. And it was just a really good time in music. And like I said, I'm grateful to be a part of it. Just remember it, sitting in my room as a youngster and playing the record player and trying to do the dance steps to what New Edition was doing and then all of a sudden finding myself in Japan in front of 10,000 Japanese citizens singing the songs that I wrote on the back of that notepad. I mean, what can you say after that? I mean, how's that? But this is just truly a blessing and I'm grateful. And I'm grateful for you guys. Thank you. Jay, and I appreciate your consistency because we were going to figure this out regardless. So, you know, I've heard some of your work as a play and I've always been very impressed with what you guys do with the different pieces, you know, full force and congratulations to, um, to your organization as well you guys are really people better than keeping the musical dream alive so we appreciate you as well thank you so much thank you shush outs do you have any shush outs well I guess the easiest shush out would be for people to not judge people they don't know personally because the only judge is God amen 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 hey if that would be sure you're listening to musicheads.com keep it locked right here it's the hottest place on the planet we want to thank Albie Shaw for taking time out of his busy schedule to connect with us here at Music Heads. Make sure you keep up to date with his latest updates on his official website. Well, I'm locking it up with Albie Shaw. Night and day, musicheads.com. Yeah.